in a world that cries out in a world, in a world, world that cries, cries out, out fear, fear me. me. We will we listen, listen to Jesus' words, Jesus's words don't, don't be afraid. afraid. In a world, in a world that, that wants, wants us to hate the other, the other. we will we live, live Jesus' call to love God, love, God, love your, your neighbor, neighbor as you as love yourself. yourself. In, a in a world, world that, that radicalizes, we too, we too will, will be radical. Radical, radical, radical with, our with our hospitality, radical, radical with our hope, radical, radical with our, with our love. love. So come, so come be together, together ready, ready to be who, who we are, are called, called to be. Let us, Let us gather, gather together, together and, worship and worship God. God. Good, morning. Good morning. My name, My name is Tom Ryan, and I, I am blessed to serve, to serve Memorial, Memorial Congregational, Congregational Church. Church. And, 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 and maybe echoing, echoing a little bit. bit. Let's see if that's better. There is a little bit of a lag, so if you do leave comments, I will uh, try to respond to them as soon as I can. As I was saying, my name is Tom O'Brien, and I am blessed to serve Memorial Congregational Church as pastor and teacher. This morning, know that no matter who you are or where you are, we are together, and you are welcome here. Let's join our voices together now in song. Hi, MCC. It's Rachel Williams, your interim minister of music. I thought today that I would share some of my suggestions on how we can best enjoy singing music together, even though we can't be sharing space right now in the pews. The hymns that we have today have words provided with them on the screen. And if you would enjoy singing them out loud with the people that you share space with right now or by yourself, I encourage you to be thinking about this that if God, our creator, can transcend time and space, so too can our spirits. And as you're singing, think about the people that you usually sing with, the people in the pews next to you, the people in the pews in, fr in front of you, the ones behind you, the ones in the choir loft. Music is the language of the souls. And if there is any way that our souls can find a connection with each other, it's by making music at the same time with the same intention and feeling the connection that comes from that. So I invite you to enjoy the spirit that we find from singing together, even though we may not be able to hear each other's voices today. Good morning, MCC. I'm Kristen Fox, and I'm really happy to be with all of you this morning. I wish we were together in person, but I'm, I'm grateful that we're able to be together virtually. Um, in addition to sharing our prayer and invocation, invocation this morning, I will also be sharing some remarks about MCC and me, and I'll be focusing on one of our four pillars of our mission and vision acceptance um, and folks in the weeks ahead will be focused on the other three connection meaning and purpose from the first moment that we my family and i entered mcc 
about three years ago, it was clear that this was a warm and welcoming place. Uh, we had greetings and um, warm welcome from folks of all ages and, and generations and felt uh, like this was, was home. Um, We've continued to feel that way um, as myself, my husband, and my children come in varied states um, every, maybe not every week, but, but regularly um, in soccer clothes or lacrosse uniforms um, and, and maybe sometimes a little bit late. Um, and uh, from the moment that we, I think, first came, it was the Christmas pageant season. Um, and my children who hadn't actively participated in the Sunday school before were welcomed right into the fray, given parts in the pageant, etc. Um, and one of the things that, that's been really important to us is that the experience at MCC has been uh, very welcoming in terms of where we are in our spiritual journey. And I'm incredibly eager to see my children and my family continue to grow as part of that spiritual community. Um, in addition, I'm grateful for the teaching around acceptance that I see both that I receive and, and my children um, through Sunday school, both in the work that Stephanie and Rachel do um, and the music, both in the Sunday school and music program. I see my children's eyes opened um, to uh, in ways that are really important uh, to teachings both within the Bible as well as within their day-to-day -day work um, that can be this relevant to them. Um, and most importantly for me is the role modeling that I am just privileged to see the MCC community um, do every day in the community. Um, participating in experiences, uh, both for me and my children, like the Interfaith MLK Day um, experience where Pastor Tom and um, Rachel and others really led work um, that's important in our community um, around uh, being proactive about acceptance um, and, and tolerance and promoting discussions around those issues is something that makes me really proud to be a member of MCC and the work that, that I see members of this community do all the time, whether it's, um, you know, enabling democracy at the polls um, and, and bipartisan ways and role modeling acceptance, tolerance, and um, dialogue around really important issues that relate to both um, faith and um, our, our work as a community. Um, and in that lens, what I would like to do um, is share our prayer of invitation. Um, this is uh, by Kitty O'Meara. She's a teacher and chaplain in Wisconsin, and it's on the theme of both accepting um, the current state of affairs as well as finding connection, meaning, and purpose in, in the current moment in time. And the people stayed home and read books and listened and rested and exercised and made art and played games and learned new ways of being and were still and listened more deeply. Some meditated, some prayed, some danced, some met their shadows and the people began to think differently and the people healed. And in the absence of people living in ignorant, dangerous and heartless ways, the earth began to heal. And when the danger passed and the people joined together again, they grieved their losses and made new choices and dreamed new images and created new ways to live and heal the earth fully as they had been healed. Amen. Stay safe. I'll have to keep remembering to unmute myself. Each week, we renew our promises to God and to each other, whether we are together or apart. I invite you now to recite with me the words of Memorial Congregational's Memorial Congregational Church's covenant. In the love of truth and in the spirit of Jesus, we unite for the worship of God and the service of humanity. And as the Lord's free people, we agree to walk together in all God's ways made known or to be made known to us. 
Good morning, everyone. My name is Stephanie Dozwa. I am the Minister of Youth and Families um, here at our virtual MCC Sudbury. At this time, I ask any and all children of God to come and join me for a special virtual children's moment. Good morning, everybody. How are you? Good. You guys good? Good. So it's been a very rough week, I'm sure, for some of you. You've had to stay home. You haven't been able to go outside much because the weather hasn't been great. I hope you've been taking some time to um, bundle up a little bit and go outside. Um, this morning, I'd like to talk to you about what it might be like for some of these people um, who can't go outside, who can't leave their homes, maybe who live alone and don't have anybody like their brothers or sisters or parents to keep them company at home. Um, it's a very hard time for them. Lots of grocery stores have made grocery delivery, which is great. Um, so people can have their groceries delivered. Stores are offering special hours just for older people to go and shop so they can shop by themselves and not be exposed to the germs that we might carry with us to them when we're shopping. Do you guys know anybody who might be stuck at home? It might be hard for them to get out. Yes, Hartley. Um, my grandpa. Your grandpa? Who else might be at home? Tinsley? Yes. Grandpa. Grandpa? Bentley? My great-grandpa and great-grandma. Yeah, your great-grandma. They're, they're in their 80s. They're very old. They might not be feeling great anyways. Um, I know that our great-grandma has been fighting pneumonia, so she can't leave her house at all. Yes, Hartley? Yeah. And I love both of them. So what do you think is something... Bentley, can you sit down? What do you think is something that we could do um, to maybe help these people feel a little better and bring a smile to their face? Tinsley. Yes, I love way dear big way dear and way dear fuck. Yeah, me too. I love all of them. Oh, me too. Bentley? We could bring them some presents and gifts. Okay, we can't leave the house. We're not allowed to go anywhere. So if we can't bring them presents, what could we do? We could mail them something, right? Hartley? Um, we could stay in the car while bringing them presents. And also, we can't give strangers presents because they live alone too. That's right. There are many strangers, that we people that we don't know who live alone, right? Me. Yes, Tinsley. And I was, I was daddy. <laughs> yes. So what I'm asking of all of you this week is mm -hmm. if you could write a letter and mail a note, a nice handwritten note to somebody that you, um, that you miss, that you love, that might be home alone and shut in by themselves. Okay. Do you think you guys could do that? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So um, everybody, not just Bentley, Hartley, and Tinsley, I'm asking everybody out there if they could take some time to um, write a note to somebody. We have a list of people at the church who um, are shut in and would love to have a note from you guys. So um, let's take some time to do that. If you need mom and dad to reach out to me to get some addresses, I am more than happy to give those to you. So have a great Sunday. And after the service, join me over yeah, on YouTube for a um, nice, fun faith exploration workshop. Good morning, everyone. My name is Stephanie Dozwa. Endless was on an endless song. Above the storm and patient, a hero will afar off him. That hails a new creation through all the two moles and the strife. I hear the music ringing. Tick, tock, 
I'm an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? What though my joys and comforts die, the Lord my Savior liveth. But through the darkness gather round, songs of night he giveth. No storm can shake my inmost calm. While to that refuge clinging, since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? We've been <clears throat> looking at the Gospel of Mark and following Jesus' disciples as they travel along with him. And today, um, the narrative lectionary, thankfully, gives us uh, an excellent reading to look at. Hear now these words of God from Mark's Gospel. One of the religious scholars who had listened to them debating had had observed how well Jesus had answered them. Now came up and put a question to him. Which is the foremost of all the commandments? Jesus replied, this is the foremost. Hear, O Israel, God, our God is one. You must love the most high God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this. You must love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. The scholar said to Jesus, well spoken, teacher. What you have said is true. The most high is one and there is no other. To love God with all your heart, with all your understanding and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself, this is far more important than any burnt offering or sacrifice. Jesus, seeing how wisely the scholar had spoken, said, You are not far from the king kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to question Jesus anymore. Later, as Jesus was teaching in the temple, he went on to say, How can the religious scholars claim the Messiah is David's heir? David himself, inspired by the Holy Spirit, said, God said to my sovereign, sit at my right hand until I place your enemies under your foot. If David addresses this one as sovereign, how can the sovereign be David's heir? The large crowd listened to this with delight. In his teaching, Jesus said, Beware of the religious scholars who like to walk around in long robes, be greeted obsequiously in the market squares, and take the front seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at banquets. These are the ones who swallow the property of widows and offer lengthy prayers for the sake of appearances. They will be judged all the more severely. Jesus sat down opposite the collection box and watched people putting money in it. And many of the rich put in a great deal. A poor widow came and put two small coins, the equivalent of a penny. Then Jesus called out the disciples and said to them, the truth is this woman has put in more than all who have contributed to the treasury. For they have put in money from their surplus, but she has put in everything she possessed, from the little she had, all she had to live on. Here ends our reading. May we be blessed with wisdom and courage for interpretation. So I saw this tweet because that's the uh, amount of my socializing nowadays. Um, but I really liked it. <clears throat> so the tweet says, uh, apocalyptic fiction showed us when the plague comes, civilization will fail. Random bands of mistrustful humans will attack each other. All moral bonds will break. But what's actually happening? Humans during a plague 
Let's stream art for free. Let's sing to each other. Let's share tips. Let's collaborate online. This genre called apocalyptic, apocalyptic. Um, in modern fiction, it's these stories and books and movies that are dealing with the aftermath of a cataclysmic event, like technology gone awry, like in the Terminator, or climate change, or disease sweeping over the land, or even fanciful things like zombies. And there's actually a whole genre of biblical literature called apocalyptic, books like Daniel and um, stories in, in Ezekiel and Job. And Christians also talk about this thing, the, the second coming or the rapture, this, this idea of Jesus coming back to earth. And in, in some of these stories, um, like left behind, you know, the, the world is destroyed. Jesus has come back and punished sinners. And, uh, you know, the, the earth is, is, is ruined. And I've never quite understood that theology. Why, why would a God who loves us with all of God's heart and mind and body and soul have a plan like that? Why would God put on flesh just like us, come to us, teach us wonderful lessons, and then have a plan to come back in a couple thousand years and destroy it all? For many of us, it feels like we're in one of these apocalyptic times. It feels like end times. It feels cataclysmic. But I believe that we have been created for a time just like this. See, Jesus prepared us for this. All of Jesus' teachings, all of the, the teachings of the prophets have prepared us for a time just like this. Jesus says that we're here to love God. And that means that we trust in the gifts that we've been given, the gifts of science and knowledge and resiliency, the gifts of love. Jesus tells us to love our neighbors as we love God and as we love ourselves. And as, as the tweet says, we're starting to see these examples. We're starting to see these wonderful examples of people loving neighbor. As we hear about all of these closings, as public buildings being closed, I saw this one story that I really loved of an art museum in Finland that rearranged all of its art so that people can see and view the art from outside through the windows. There are incredible stories of resiliency and love coming from Italy as the entire country is shut down. And I want to share this one video of folks standing out on their balcony and singing together. That's loving neighbor. That's what Jesus is talking about. That's what Jesus 
taught us about. You know, when I was in seminary, I learned that the, the word apocalypse doesn't mean what I thought it meant. We often think of, of the apocalypse as being, being the end of everything, being, being the end of the world. But it, apocalypse is a Greek word that means revelation. And this crisis is revealing to us our God-given gifts. It's revealing to us our strength and our courage. It's revealing the love that we all share, revealing the ways that our love can be expressed. This is how we love neighbor, by social distancing, even though it's hurtful, by sharing our resources, not hoarding what we, everything we can get our hands on. We love our neighbor by using our time to provide and care for those on the front line. I know that there are folks who are selling masks, working to help out uh, our medical providers and others. This is how we love God, by trusting and supporting all of God's creation. God's love has been revealed to us, and our love is being revealed every moment. Thanks be to God. I have to admit, I'm a <clears throat> mix of emotions right now. I'm sitting in the sanctuary and I'm looking out at empty pews and I miss everyone, especially at this time when we gather together for prayer. But my heart is lifted up by everyone who's joining us on Facebook, by people who are near and far, people who are part of MCC and people who are finding our community here with us. We can still pray together, no matter where we are. If you have a prayer that you'd like to offer, I invite you to add it to the comments on Facebook. Uh, I will try to lift it up, but of course you have your direct line straight to God. And you don't need me to be that intercess to intercede. Let's be together now in prayer. Oh, holy, loving God, we thank you for calling us together, even when we're not physically for, present, for giving us these gifts of ways that we can still be spiritually with one another. God, be with us in this time and always. Be with us in all of the emotions that are on our hearts and the joy that we feel knowing that we are together in spirit and the despair that we feel wondering what's next. Surround us in hope 
and in love. Oh, Holy One, we pray, especially during this time, for those already struggling with COVID-19 and with other diseases. And we lift up the doctors and nurses and caregivers who are there supporting them and caring for them, who are putting their very lives on the line to take care of our community. And we give thanks for the retail workers and the delivery drivers and everyone who is out there working to try to keep us supplied, to give us resources during this time of struggle. We give thanks, God, for joys in our own community. For Matt Migliozzi and his longtime girlfriend, Raleigh, who celebrate being engaged. We pray with hope and love for what's coming in their lives. God, during this time of distancing, we pray for those who are alone, those in isolation and those who are struggling during this time, especially for our students, for our teenagers, for high school and college seniors who are during this time of transition in their life and who have find, found a time of celebration get cut short. Kids who are grieving, the sudden departure of friends. For those who don't have stable home lives, we pray for those who are struggling with low-wage jobs, those who are losing their jobs during this time. We pray for those who are mourning, those who are unhoused. <clears throat> Prayers for the family and friends of Sandy Ertel, who was such a positive force in our community, in Sudbury and in MCC. We also lift up prayers for Shirley Rothwell's sister, Martha Pierce, for all who loved her. Prayers for those who are suffering with illnesses, especially Joni Valaton, and those who struggle with cancer, those who are fighting autoimmune disorders, those who need that extra protection during this time. God, we lift up these prayers, these names that have been spoken aloud and the prayers on all of our hearts, knowing that you are listening to us. And God, we give you thanks for all the gifts that you have given us and especially the gift of Jesus Christ, who gives us words to pray when we don't have words of our own. We lift up his prayer to you now, praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. A few announcements. Um, <clears throat> thank you to everyone who is
doing their best to help our community. To folks who are out there volunteering, who are uh, looking to put together masks and find other ways to donate needed supplies to hospitals. The Sudbury Food Pantry continues to be open. Um, if you are able to, to help out to volunteer in any way, um, please let me know, or you can reach out to, to George Connor and, and he can help, help you uh, understand where work is needed. There's also an incredible group called uh, Neighbors Brigade. Um, I believe their email address is neighborsbrigade.org. And you can both sign up there to volunteer. And also, if you need help, you can, you can reach out for help there. They're doing a wonderful job of uh, coordinating volunteers. And of course, if you need anything, please reach out to me or reach out to one of the deacons so that we can find a way to help you. We are still doing our best to provide ministry to our community and to the church. If you are able to, during this time, we invite you to uh, continue to, to donate to the church, either by setting up regular donations through your bank or by going to mccsudbury.org slash donate, where you can donate through Vanco or through PayPal. Um, you can also Venmo at mccsudbury.org. Thank you very much to everyone who has participated and joined in this worship. Now, be a part of God's world and serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people, loving and serving God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit, now and into the life everlasting. May the Lord bless you as you walk the way of Christ Jesus in thought, word, and deed. May Christ's life be yours, now and always. And may God be with you till we meet again.